Good afternoon and welcome everyone to Seahawk Talk here on the Salve Athletics Network. I am your host, Andrew Pizzelli. We've got a great show for you here today. We will have Kevin Gilmartin, Kane Smith, Joe Saccone, Meredith Arancio, and Madison Lee on the program here today. Once again, we're live every day, 3 to 4 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope through Twitter. We're going to get to the producers as well to start out today's program. But first, like always, we want to remind everyone to keep their distance. That is Ed Habershaw with his rendition of Keep Your Distance from The Shake, Rhode Island Bass Band. That is one of our perpetual messages here on Seahawk Talk, keeping your distance, hand washing, mask wearing, all the things that Salve is doing really well at right now. We want to keep it up, so we'll always be reminding you of that. I'd like to bring in the producers now, Joey Morelli and Mike DeFusco. Fellas, how are we here on a Thursday? Doing pretty good. Excited for the weekend. Yeah, Pretty pretty good day so far. It's kind of cold, but kind of like it like that. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Mike, something. Uh, I've been watching the ALCS, watching the baseball playoffs. Uh, we've talked about the, them getting their playoff format in. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts as, as something as a baseball player yourself. Uh, if you've watched any of the ALCS, uh, Jose Altuve uh, is having some struggles. He committed yeah. three errors, throwing errors, in a single game uh, earlier this week. And some have said that he has the thing, or as other people like to call it, the whys or the yips. Um, never good, it seems, especially in baseball. It's something that seems to affect second basemen, sometimes pitchers who can't throw over to first anymore, or catchers who are afraid to, some of them afraid to throw back to the, to the pitcher or don't want to throw down to second anymore. For a second baseman, fielding and throwing the ball is really critical <laughs> to your position. Um, tough to see a guy who's been so good struggle now, uh, especially in the playoffs. Some might call it a little bit of karma for the Astros. But uh, have you ever gone through uh, the yips uh, or yeah. been on teams with with any guys, and have they been able to work their way through it? I feel like it's probably easier for younger guys to work through it than maybe a guy this far into his pro career when it happens. Yeah, so I've never been like personally afflicted with like that drastic a case of the X. I've obviously gone through slumps like anyone does in any sport, pretty much. You know, have your ups and downs, but like that is like such a like a mental thing. You can't even just say like, oh, we're gonna break it back down to mechanics. We're gonna make it set. It's, it's all in your head. Like, there's nothing mechanically you can do to solve that at this point, especially this late into the postseason. Like, you're it, you might need to actually like just have him DH for the rest of this ALCS because it's just it's not gonna come back around. I've seen it. It's not gonna change um without some offseason work so but i have seen a couple players um a pitcher i i used to play with one i mean he was never particularly accurate but he could at least get it within the realm of the zone and it went through a phase of uh god it might have been like two weeks in the fall and then even into the winter it was like the last two weeks of the fall and then progressing throughout the winter where he could not get it within 10 to 20 feet of the plate and that's hardly an exaggeration like it was not even close so once that sort of thing happens, it's all mental. You can't try to break it down to mechanics. Then it gets more in your head. So you just got to kind of let them feel it out. So, um, yeah, that is that is drastic and sad to see for Altuve at the, the worst timing you could possibly have because he's one of the best second basemen uh, there's ever been. Yeah, I don't think, though, it's funny watching the rest of the world not really feel all that bad for him or the Astros, <laughs> um, given yeah. you know everything that happened with them in the offseason. Yeah, the Apple Watch scandal, you know, that was not <laughs> the spying and the sign stealing. I don't think people are giving him any sympathy at this point. Now, we were talking about some cross-sport comparisons or, or other guys who have gone through it. I mean, you see it. Golfers can go through the yips with the swing. Uh, field goal kickers missing missing field goals. There's tons of other comparisons we can make. Usually, it doesn't end well when guys get the yips. But, Mike, you did find an example of a guy who was able to turn it around. 
Yeah, so there's a couple. This was like actually a great article. So um, this is Sports Illustrated. This guy um, right here. Actually, this is one that never came back. This is a throw in there. Another second baseman way over the head. Whoa. Yeah. And then so he actually he never made it back. But this is a great story that some baseball players might be familiar with. And that is the uh, Rick and Keel story. He was a pitcher. And he was a pretty good pitcher, just a solid uh, staff guy. And he threw six wild pitches in a row. Um, oh, my gosh. And after that, yeah, so he did come back. He was able to come back as an outfielder, actually, and have a fairly productive career. But this is just um, – I'll show you a couple here. You can see it just – once it once it goes, it goes. He threw six in a row, ended up walking the ballpark, and he never came back. So um, – but it never came back as a pitcher. So yeah, once it happens, some like maybe Altuve will come back as a pitcher now instead of you know <laughs> what he did and go the opposite. That's the only thing. Like, you know, I hope he does, but at at some point, like if that happens, there's not much a whole lot you can do. Yeah, crazy story. So we'll we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, I know the Astros are not. I think they're down three zero. Uh, yeah, I, I believe yeah, it's the Rays year. They deserve it. They're never. They're they're always yeah. called the Red Sox of the Yankees. They need a year. <laughs> I guess it's it's three one right now that series. So the Tampa Bay Rays are are in control. Uh, game five is actually today at five oh seven. So tune in if you want to see the struggles of Jose Altuve at five o'clock. Five oh seven specifically. That's I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why five. It's always yeah. It's always seven. It's like seven oh seven, five oh seven, or whatever it is. <laughs> all that. It's a baseball thing. Game, all it's the typical game baseball right stuff. Yeah. Just like the numbers. Uh, Joey, do you have anything here you'd want to bring up at the top of our program? Yeah, so I found, um, I was just looking through articles for stuff in Newport, and I found this is from a couple days ago, but it happened over the weekend, which is why we missed it. Um, applications opened for Newport's Take It Outside initiative. or Well, I guess it's all over Rhode Island, I believe, that's doing it. But, um, uh, yeah, it's something the governor kind of came up with. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, stores and businesses, or stores and restaurants are encouraged to have as much stuff outside as they can. And um, Newport got $75,000 from Rhode Island Commerce Corporation, which I don't know what that is, but some somebody uh, to apply for, you can apply for grants uh, to help, you know, um, cushion the, the financial blow of having to move your stuff outside. And um, yeah, uh, oh, let me pull back up. Uh, how do you, let me see how you do it. Uh, oh, you get, okay. So if you go to their website, I'm sure if you own a business, you're familiar with the, it, 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 it's a bunch of like business words. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> there's a procedure it, it, in place. It, yeah. There's a procedure. It's, it looks simple, but if you own a store, I'm sure you've gone through this office before. I'm sure you already know about it, but if you didn't know about it, or if you know someone who owns a small business and would like to take it outside, uh, they should go look at that. Um, yeah, that's going to be a huge thing. You know, every the, exactly, for businesses yeah. to survive, uh, needing to move outside, finding creative solutions. I think everybody's just trying to find. Doesn't matter how. It's just getting through the winter <laughs> and getting to the mm -hmm. to the warm warm weather again. Uh, people are praying for a mild winter like we had last year oh. uh, again. Um, so yeah, no, have to keep an eye on that thing. I know a lot of a lot of Newport businesses have had creative solutions. Hopefully, mm -hmm. through the summer, hopefully they can find more creative ways to stay open through the winter uh, and get to the spring. Uh, fellas, I'm going to let you guys go, get to work behind the scenes, uh, helping to produce the show, and we'll talk to you again uh, at the end of the program. All right. All right, that's Joey Morelli and Mike DeFusco. I want to welcome into the show now the head coach of our football team, joined by two of his freshman athletes, Kevin Gilmartin, Kane Smith, and Joe Saccone. Welcome to the program, fellas. How are we doing? Good Excellent. Thank you for having us. Uh, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on uh, on something first that we were looking at uh, in the the pre-show. Uh, some I want some analysis here of this of this play. Uh, I'll let it run, and then you guys can just uh, go ahead and tell me what you see. I'm sure everybody has seen this already. I, I have a couple comments, but I'm going to let the defensive back comment about it first. Yeah, uh, Josh Norman. Derrick Henry's now his father. That that was <laughs> should have gone low. Yeah, that's that's technique, right? Should have gone low. You get you get down and do a little Seahawk tackling. You get around those hips, and he was up near the shoulder pads. And Derrick Henry said, "Go get your big brother." <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, now, everybody who's ever played football has probably been a part 
of a play like this, um, either in a good way or a bad way. I'll admit, I've never stiff-armed anybody like that in my life. And I have been stiff-armed like that in, in my life. Uh, have you got any memories you guys have of particular plays like this? Uh, you know, obviously Kane and, and Joe, young guys in, in your careers, maybe uh, Kevin, I'm sure you have plenty of stories. You've probably been witness to or a part of many stiff arms. Yeah, there was a running back from my high school. He stiffed on this kid so bad. He took the next two series off. He, he was probably a little bit embarrassed as well. <laughs> I've never really been part of a stiff arm like that, but I've seen guys get mossed worse than you ever want to be mossed in your life. How how big of a hype thing is it when that happens on on a sideline? You know, if you're if you're the Titans in the situation, does that just does the whole offense just fired up to like run it again, run somebody over? And if you're the defense, you're like, oh god, please don't run it again. No matter what, you've won that game. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mo, it always it always turns the tide. I uh, wanted to ask you guys, Kane, uh, Joe, you guys are freshmen. Um, what is it like to be a freshman in a, in a season like this, you know, getting to Salve? And do you think being freshman in the long run uh, will help you since this is all, everything was going to be new to begin with, and if you can get through this, you can draw on this experience for years to come? Yeah, I think it's very difficult, like, in the beginning, like, especially with the new normal, but... As it moves on, it'll definitely be easier from here. This is the hardest it's going to get, probably. It, it is kind of nice having this much time to learn the playbook, but I wish we could hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> I say that's part of the adjustment is the the practices or everything. Everything is so different. Um, what has been is that been the biggest thing? Not being able to hit each other and really you know do football things on a football field. Yeah, it's been very different from any practice to be a part of keeping the distance even like on the sideline mm -hmm. and even as coaches you know normally you know as the freshmen come in we're taking a look at them seeing how they're playing and everything and then and you can get a good evaluation of them uh this year because there isn't the hitting you know the evaluations are, is a lot harder you know i don't know if if joe sacone if he ever comes up and uh, tries to tackle somebody is he going to get stiff armed and thrown to the ground <laughs> Kane Smith, can he go out and block somebody? I don't know. You know, they they've been working on their technique and everything, but uh, you know, I, I we'll have to wait and see. It's exciting, you know. It's kind of like drawing it out. You know, I'm like, it's it's been Christmas Eve every day since they got here, and I can't wait to finally open up the presents and find out if they can hit somebody or not. <laughs> uh, Joe and Kane, what went into your decisions to come to Salve? Why did you choose Salve? The coaching, Coach Bill Morton. <laughs> That was a big factor of it. Yeah, I've heard he's awesome, so I had to come see. Okay, I was gonna say, so you you've heard about the coaching, Kane. You've heard about Coach Gill. Gill, uh, what is your connection, a special connection to these two guys? You know, uh, I'll give a backstory first. I mean, every year in recruiting, you kind of uh, you're looking to to bring twenty five to thirty five new players into our family. And, uh, you know, I mean, you're looking at talent. That's definitely one thing. But you also you're looking at their, the culture and chemistry of people. And, uh, you know, you want to you want to get the right people. that are going to fit into our family. And so, uh, you know, we're at a point now where we've been here. The staff has been here for m multiple years. And, uh, you know, the coaches at, in the high schools know us. And so they know, you know, the kind of people that we're looking for. But uh, one thing that's different about these two is, uh, you know, not just are we looking for we're looking for the right people, but we kind of, we knew their, their family a little bit beforehand. Um, uh, Kane Smith's father, uh, Dave Smith, uh, we played college football together and Joe Saccone's parents. I knew them, his mother, uh, Kelly, Kelly Ann Smith. She used to be now she's Kelly Saccone. Uh, she used to live around the corner from me when I was growing up and, uh, his dad, Joe Saccone, we played Huey league football together. And so, uh, you know, I mean, we always say it that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So whenever I'm uh, bringing in new players, you know, I'm, I'm meeting the parents and saying, you know, trying to figure out them and saying, are they going to fit into this family? But meanwhile, uh, you know, when, uh, when Dave called me about his son and Joe called me about his son, uh, they were like, what do you think? Think you'd be interested in him? I said, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. We'd love to have them just because you know, their families and you know, they're going to fit in with the, with the culture. Um, and that's, that's awesome. You know? And then the other part is you get so close with players uh, and then to be actually able to coach one of your friend's kids. I mean, it's, it's just an unbelievable feeling. It's awesome. 
Kane and Joe. Obviously, you know, you guys probably uh, heard stories. You know all that sort of stuff. Uh, did that, you, know, you, you mentioned the coaching was the reason you came, but did it help having that familiarity, uh, in a sense, knowing exactly what you were walking into with Coach Gill? I think I did. My dad always told me, like, when they would play Pop Warren football together, that even though he wasn't the biggest, he was by far the toughest kid he ever met. And that he was running marathons when he was like twelve. I mean, I never really heard much about him before I started the process of picking a college. But what I heard about him is he's a great guy and was an animal on the field, crazy athlete. And I knew if you can play football as a freshman in college, you can coach freshman in college. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would uh, just to jump in with you, Andrew. You got to know better than that to ask that. Do, would they know anything about me? Nobody ever knows that. You never know what I'm going to throw at you. I'm going to throw <laughs> curveballs at you left and right. You know, <laughs> they never know. I say I know what kind of a competitor uh, Gil is from uh, from playing noontime hoops with him over these. You can't ever doubt the lefty. <laughs> but that's that's a short, fat old man now. I mean, that's that's many moons ago. You know. <laughs> um. I think for everybody, the expectations uh, for this year, I think firstly in people's minds, they're thinking, play. Let's play. We want to play. We want to play. Uh, Kane and Joe, from an offensive side of things and from a defensive side of things, what do you think this team can be offensively and defensively, hopefully, if and when we get to play? If everyone is holding each other accountable and works as hard as we could, I think we could be one of the best teams in our conference. Yeah, I think every upperclassman here is great. They've taken us under their wings so far. And looking at the other offensive linemen, I know we can run the ball at least. Kevin, you agree with those assessments? Hey, you never know. You know, yeah, you know, we're we're always thinking we're going to be the best, but you gotta you gotta back it up. And that's the only way to do that is keep working and getting out there. I love the fact that uh, Joe brought up uh, holding each other accountable because because that's the biggest thing that we have right now. I mean. Uh, the carrot of the games are, are months away, and the only thing we can do is get out to practice and, and work hard. And if we're holding each other accountable and making ourselves a lot better, uh, you know, great things are going to happen. And then on top of it, um, Monday night we had a guest speaker for the team. Uh, we, had a, we had Colonel Don Yates coming to talk to the team, and that was one of his points was that, uh, you know, the great, great teams, not just football teams, but teams anywhere, hold each other accountable. That was the first thing he said. And the second one was trust. And so uh, – Obviously, he got through to uh, through to Joe, and hopefully, he got through to a couple other people too. Awesome, guys! I want to thank you so much for for coming on here today. We're all looking forward to seeing you out in the field, Kevin. When will hitting happen? These guys are itching to hit each other. Will hitting happen in the fall? When is that coming? Uh, is that part of the phasing at all? We we don't encourage hitting because then you know that we don't that's that's violence. We don't we don't encourage that at all. Uh, we're talking about tackling. Yes, tackling. Yes. We will be tackling soon, hopefully. Yes, I did not imagine just a giant Donnie Brook of football players. No, <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Brook, good word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's coming for you guys soon. Well, fellas, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, good luck with the rest of the fall, and like everybody was saying, hopeful for the spring. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Always a pleasure. All right, that's Kevin Gilmartin joined by Kane Smith and Joe Sacone, two freshman players on the football team. We're going to take a short break and be back with two members of our women's volleyball team. Don't go anywhere. So you want to be a Seahawk. Let's make sure you wash your hands, keep your distance, wear your mask, and love your Seahawks. Come on, Sammy. I know it's pumpkin spice season, but you can't bring drinks to class. We have simple rules here, Sammy. Get out. Come back when you can follow them. You gotta take care of yourself and others, even if you are Sammy the Seahawk.
though you want to be a Seahawk. Let's make sure you wash your hands, keep your distance, wear your mask, and love your Seahawks. Come on, Sammy. I know it's pumpkin spice season, but you can't bring drinks to class. We have simple rules here, Sammy. Get out. Come back when you can follow them. You gotta take care of yourself and others, even if you are Sammy the Seahawks. All right, welcome back to Seahawk Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Pazelli. We're going to go now to a member of our women's volleyball team, Madison Lee. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. We're waiting on your teammate, uh, yep. Meredith Arancio, but she will be there momentarily. So I yep. guess I'll just start with the questions for you. Uh, okay. First, you were named a captain. Uh, what did it mean to you to be named a captain of the women's volleyball team in your junior season? Uh, it really meant a lot. This team means so much to me. I love the girls, and I'm so thankful that like I can be that kind of a leader for them. So it just being named a captain junior year was something super special. Mm -hmm. Now you've also gotten to play with your sister. Uh, what was that like to have you know a sibling uh, on the team with you? I love it. We've always played like on the same high school and club team. Um, so the communication's really there. It feels like normal having her next to me on the court i know she's got my back on defense and everything i can yell at her and <laughs> she'll you know yell at me later so i just it's great having her up here and getting to play with her again are there any other m lees in the pipeline who are going to come and play for you uh here at salve so my sister i'm doing a fifth year and mackenzie the third emily is a junior in high school right now so she'll be a freshman when I'm in my fifth year and I'm trying to get her to come to Salve. She's a really good volleyball player, better than I was in high school, but don't tell her I said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to get her to come up, but we'll see. The M Lee thing, uh, that has to be on purpose, right? Like, so how, how did that st like, where did that come from? The decision to have everybody with the M names, maybe so, explain that if you want. It was actually an accident. Um, my mom had me, she liked the movie Splash, so she named me Madison. She liked the name Morgan. And then Mackenzie, she ha she named her Kendall for like five minutes. And we were all there and we were like, Kendall, no, what's your other name? And so she said Mackenzie. And then thought Macy was going to be the last one, couldn't be the auto now. And then Mallory came and then Maggie came. So I kind of just kept going with the M theme after that. <laughs> Uh, I've asked every of the athletes who we've had a chance to speak to about how the summer went for them, uh, being able to train volleyball, you need a net, uh, you know, everybody had a different situation to train over the summer. How did you train this summer, uh, and stay sharp from a volleyball uh, perspective? Did you set up a net in the backyard? Did you improvise? How did it go over the summer? So I would work out at my house. I have cones, um, and stuff. And then when the sand courts near me opened up, 
I would go there and train. I try to get there like once a week just to practice like over the net. And I have all my sisters who can help like shag or like serve at me and stuff like that. So it really, I try to do over the net stuff when I could. Otherwise, I really just focused on like plyometrics, footworks, like things that you can do without a net. Yeah. It helps too that you have all those sisters. You have a team with you to to get yeah. that workout in. All six, yeah. Uh, how has the adjustment gone to getting back to campus, meeting with your team? You guys get to really, you know, meet your coach as a whole team. I know, you know, he came in before the shutdown in the spring, but now to really be on a court and, and working with uh, with Sebastian, including the freshmen, how has that gone? It um it was really great because we couldn't really like do too much before you know corona shut down shut down everything we didn't have a spring season so we did online meetings over the spring but that's not the same as being in the gym getting to actually like touch the volleyballs and see what like coaching style is and how everybody plays together and it's just been great i really think it's like going really really well so far um and it just makes you super happy to be back in the gym and you know playing the actual sport so I've asked this question to a lot of people too. Never probably in your life did you think you'd be dying for, oh my God, I can't wait to be in practice. Oh my God, I can't wait to be in a classroom. I, yeah. Um, literally, it we it was strange because I'm at home and I'm saying, wow, I want to just practice. Even now we don't have like competitions or anything to look forward to. And some of our practices will just be, um, we did slides, like footwork all for an hour last practice. And it's just things that, maybe last year I would have been like, wow, this is kind of tedious. But this year I'm like, man, this is awesome. I get to work on these skills. I get to actually play. Like it just really changed your pers my perspective and made me like, just like super thankful that we actually get to play and be in the gym and everything. In a weird way, because you get to focus on those skills, uh, do you think in the long run that will really benefit everybody once you guys get to games? For sure. Yeah. There, this is honestly like, a blessing in disguise because like what season do you get where you literally are just practicing you're literally just working hey man <laughs> hi Meredith Razzio welcome to the show <laughs> yeah sorry I was having technical difficulties we've all gone through it it's all good don't worry sorry about that uh we were just talking about uh you know how in a weird way not having games until the spring and having all this time, uh, you know, you're working on what maybe would have been like the tedious things of, of practice and all these skills and long drills. But now maybe in the long run, doing all this will be beneficial to you guys once you actually get to play games. I think definitely. I, it's almost as if like we're flipping our spring season and fall season and like mm -hmm. we're kind of just like getting used to playing with the freshmen. And like I think it's really good for our team, especially because we didn't have a spring season last year. Mm -hmm. Now, getting those, uh, actually, I've kind of already asked this question already. As you mentioned freshmen, uh, how impressed have you guys been with the freshmen? Obviously, for them, it would all be new to begin with on top of the coronavirus situation, uh, trying to adjust to everything. How impressed have you been with them on the court, but also, you know, as, as people trying to integrate and become college athletes and everything else? Um, I think given their situation and like be, kind of being thrown into this like kind of awkward like freshman year, I think I give them a lot of props and I think they're doing a great job like socially like they're awesome with the whole team like everyone gets along with them like they're really good girls. Yeah, and even like for Brighton like coming all the way from Arizona like usually during preseason that's when you like get super close to everybody like have that time to kind of like get used to your surroundings and stuff. And she didn't have that this year and Sydney didn't either. So that is just like super hard. And it's like great how well they've meshed considering we didn't have that time, you know? Mm -hmm. What's been the harder adjustment coming back? Classroom stuff, living situations, or, you know, practicing uh, with the restrictions? I think practicing, practicing, yeah. for sure. practicing with the mask on is like really rough. But I mean, I think we're all kind of used to it now. But it's still a huge adjustment. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes and expectations for the spring? Is it just playing games? We don't care what happens. We just want to have them. Or do you guys have some serious goals and expectations for this team? I mean, obviously, I pray that we will have a season. But 
if we do get the opportunity to play, like making it all the way, like is probably the main goal. Yeah, you always want to go like as far as you can go and be as competitive, competitive as you can. <laughs> Even though it's been like a strange season, we still definitely want to like compete. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had asked Madison about working in the off season and having to be creative with solutions. Uh, she's lucky to have a whole team that lives with her to get some practice in. But uh, <laughs> Meredith, how was your summer? How did you train? How did you, did you have to creatively make your own net at home? How did, how was your summer as far as the training aspect? Summer was good. I mean, I just had a volleyball and a, a garage wall that I would like set up set against and I kind of just like made my own gym at home and would go for runs and try to keep myself in shape the best way possible without having any gyms open or anything. You uh, said on our little uh, form to, you know, a questionnaire for the show, uh, something people wouldn't know is that you box for fun uh, <laughs> in, in Newport. Are there any skills that you can translate there, uh, you know, for, to the volleyball court, footwork, anything, anything like that? And uh, how did you get into the boxing thing? Well, I did. I started BoxFit for the first time about my my sophomore year, and I only just got back into it about two weeks ago. Um, mainly just to like stay in shape because I don't really like working out with masks like in the weight room and stuff. So I decided to go back to that, and I mean, I guess it it helps overall with like staying in shape. So I mean, it's obviously good for the sport. One of the big things uh, we talk about is, you know, the preseason, getting to know each other, all of that sort of stuff. Obviously, those things have to be different. You have to be creative with those as well. How has that gone with the team and building the chemistry and the team bonding stuff so far this fall? So we did the scavenger hunt. We did a um, team scavenger hunt, and that was really fun. That was, like, the first time we really all hung out, like, hung out, like, outside of practice or anything. Um yeah, I know we're planning to do some like pasta dinners in the future. Mm-hmm. I think this week we're going to have one at me, Katie, and Liv's house. Um, just to, trying to keep the team together as much as possible. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ladies, uh, Meredith, glad you could make it. Uh, eventually, <laughs> Sorry, better, be better late. late than never. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us here today. Good luck with the rest of your fall and hope to see you guys on the court this spring. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Take it easy now. That is Meredith Arancio and Madison Lee of our women's volleyball team. We're going to take a short break and be right back to wrap up today's show. So you want to be a Seahawk. Let's make sure you wash your hands, keep your distance, wear your mask, and love your Seahawks. Sammy, no mask? Come on, Sammy. I know it's pumpkin spice season, but you can't bring drinks to class. We have simple rules here, Sammy. Get out. Come back when you can follow them. You gotta take care of yourself and others, even if you are Sammy the Seahawk. Welcome back to Seahawk Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Pazelli. We're going to bring in the producers now, Joey Morelli and Mike DeFusco, to close out today's show. Fellas, I always like getting your initial thoughts uh, from our guests uh, and what they had to say here today. Yeah, I like that surprise, um, you know, entrance there but at the end. So, yeah, we were able to get both, and I was glad to, um, you know, see that. Also glad to see, um, it's nice to see the new faces for, on some of the uh, sports scenes with the freshmen, too. So that was good to see with Coach Gil Martin. Yeah, I think um, the thing for me that surprised me the most was, um, oh, I don't want to say, uh, Meredith, <laughs> or no, Ma- sorry, it was Madison. Madison and, and however many siblings she ended up having, you said you were like, she has a whole volleyball team, and I just thought that was funny. Like, And yeah, all M names, like, uh, I, I know people who that just kind of happened, like the first two kids have like the same letter by accident, and then the third one, the parents are like, well, 
we gotta now <laughs> <laughs> gotta go for the alliteration <laughs> yeah mike uh what do you have here to close out today's show i think you wanted to talk about some events that are coming up locally this week yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Going into the weekend, just wanted to give some people a sense of, you know, what's going on. And selfishly, I'm going to give my hometown uh, some uh, some uh, a little quick um, note right here. This is from East Greenwich, actually. This is where I grew up. And this weekend, they're playing um, a movie at their um, local theater. It's called Almost Famous, and that will be showing at the East Greenwich Odeum, which is actually, it's pretty cool. It's right on Main Street. And um, if you go down, there's a whole abundance of restaurants to go check out as well. So you can make a night of it, go see a movie. And then get dinner at one of the many restaurants on Main Street. And then also there's a few other ones, Fire Flowers and a Time Machine. Um, this one I'm a little unsure of what it is. It's in Providence, Rhode Island. It's a it says um, it's a weave of monologues, poetry, dance, and ritual together. So an interesting evening if you want to go see that. Um, a virtual child's baking class. If there's any children bakers watching. And then to close it out, the Paw Sox Grand Finale, which I talked about a few weeks ago. I think ago. punctuation might be necessary in that virtual child's baking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So it's just a, it, that, that's pretty much just like a child, I guess, if you're uh, interested in that sort of thing and um, you want to learn how to bake, there's some guy who's going to be doing a Q&A over uh, Zoom or something. But um, yeah, and then this Paw Sox Finale, which I really want to plug because I did work there a couple uh, summers ago. And, you know, they're moving to Worcester. So, again, if you want to say goodbye, they're doing a whole weekend's worth of stuff. So check out their website. And, you know, if you got nothing to do, go up to Pawtucket and say goodbye to the uh, Paw Sox. Cool. Joey, you just brought up uh, in our little chat here a little interesting, really interesting piece of news. I want you to share that. I, I looked something up, and it was the first thing. And then I clicked on it. It was obviously more disappointing than we expected. But uh, Oxford University has developed a five-minute COVID test that it says – uh, which is important, can di differentiate it from other viruses. Um, I'm not sure, like, obviously, like, develop uh, is vague because it's, it then says the team behind the test hope to have an approved device by the middle of 2021, which is obviously very far away, but that it's better than nothing. Like, that means a five-minute test is doable, and hypothetically, that then means someone can make one faster. Not faster as in time, faster as in, like, it come out in February or something like, you know, when it's still like maximum impact time. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. That sort of stuff is going to be crucial in our world in athletics. You know, the NBA, I think it was with Yale developed the first saliva test. So instead of having to get yeah, the, the thing jammed up your nose, uh, just a little swab of the cheek. Um, so continuing to push, push the boundaries and refine the science and get faster and faster testing will only help, uh, you know, the world of athletics where being able to say test day of or right up before a game, uh, you know, and might there be, op you know, things happen where, oh, hey, a guy's positive and now he can't play. Or, but you could also then tell, hey, all these guys are negative and can play. Um, and it'll just, the better testing we can get, the better it will be for everybody. So it's good yeah, to see. Absolutely. You know, that there's the push for all of that. So that's an awesome little piece of news. Uh, fellas, great work here today. Uh, got through Thursday. And then tomorrow, <laughs> TGIF. We'll have another packed show with our winter sports. So great work as always. And look forward to talking to you tomorrow. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. All yes, right, that's Mike DeFusco and Joey Morelli, the producers here on Seahawk Talk. I want to thank our guests once again here today. We had Kevin Gilmartin, Kane Smith, Joe Saccone from our football team, and then Meredith Arancio and Madison Lee from our women's volleyball team. Once again, we are live every day, 3 to 4 p.m. here on the Salve Athletics Network. You can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope through Twitter. And if you can't catch the show, you can go back and watch the archive version of every single episode on those platforms or subscribe to the Seahawk Talk podcast through your favorite podcasting platform. Had a great show today. Looking forward to tomorrow. Until then, everybody, have a good afternoon, and we'll talk to you at 3.